But when you look closer at the data, it really is a tale of two cities. Uh, Cincinnati has the sixth highest rate of childhood poverty in the country. And when you disaggregate the data by race, which has been done, and, and the um, Urban League of uh, Greater Cincinnati did a study a few years ago that, that really told a tale of two cities, there are great racial disparities against every metric that they looked at. So while we have on one hand a, a booming economy and a booming city, there are many who are not enjoying that same kind of advancement. So because of that, uh, about three or four years ago, there was a child poverty collaborative that was created that was geared towards understanding what are the root causes of poverty and, and how can we fix this? It was, a, it was very embarrassing, frankly, for the community to understand that they had such a high child poverty rate. And one of the initiatives that came out of the Poverty Collaborative was an employer roundtable. And the purpose of the roundtable was to help employers to, to really engage the private sector in this great community need to help them improve the quality of their jobs, to help them recruit, retain, and advance their workers, and, and hopefully advance them to higher levels of, of self-sufficiency. And through that roundtable, our goal was to help these companies identify how they could create long-term value for their businesses, for their employees, but also for the community. But within the roundtable, we also wanted to recognize exemplary employers because we knew we had exemplary employers, but we didn't quite have a way to identify them in a objective way to do that. And we also wanted to drive community transformation. We wanted to drive scale. And so we saw opportunities through anchor institutions like TriHealth to really drive it through their procurement and their supply chain processes. So I'd been working with Mark and Larry for a while. We actually, they came into town a few years ago and did a pilot with about five or six or seven uh, companies with the tool. And it was all kind of coming together, the development of the tool, but then also this greater community awareness around how could we really engage the private sector that, that we saw that the tool could really help us with, with all the work that we were trying to do with the private sector. It, it gave us a way to activate CEOs, to activate them to really engage on improving the quality of their jobs, but to do it as a business strategy, not as an initiative. If you have it deeply embedded as a business strategy, it has much more staying power. Initiatives come and go, as we all know. 